I'm going to sneeze. Stop that. Let me pop this out. Let me put that over there. Let me pin that. Muted just in time. Pin that. We are live. Hey, did you tweet? Uh, no. Okay. I did not tweet. Let us talk. Oh, Tuesdays, man. Tuesdays. Oh, wow. So I'm actually speaking as the .NET Foundation in my browser window. Oops. Maybe I, should, I am also. Maybe I should not do that. Well, I can't help it. Well, oh, yeah. You have to you open up a new, you down, gotta right? open up a new thingy. No, you just drop it down in the thing. You can change accounts on the fly on YouTube. Uh, on a window-by-window window basis? Sure. Can you not? On a window-by-window window basis, yeah. I mean... Of course, now I've said that when I drop down the account selector, you say switch account, and it's Watch just, how you, it just shows gonna, me one. So you're going to end up. Everyone is freaking out about Face ID. Yeah. Again, Nokia did Face ID in 2011. Yeah. And, oh, there we and go. Apple invented water. Let me switch to that account. Ridiculous. Oh, God. So can I switch accounts? I'm trying. I, I switched and then I pasted. Yeah. Yes, I am switched. There we go. Pause the video. Pop the chat out. Do it all again. Oh, multi-account is so much fun. I'm amazed that it works at all. There we go. Back as me. There we go. All um, right. So if this works, then you're back as you. I'm back as me. And we're streaming as the .NET Foundation. Isn't it not, great? Not as me. Yeah. Which means oh, you should be you able know to... You know what's funny, though? You know what's funny? What's What's funny? Please, what's funny? You are hosting the stream as the .NET Foundation, which means your lower third has the .NET Foundation logo. Yes, but I, so, I could change it if I went into the Hangout yeah. toolbox. I guess in the future, it might be possible to sign in and host the stream as the .NET Foundation on a separate machine and then invite yourself. Oh. So that you would be a participant of the stream as you. Oh. Actually, uh, no, I can't change it. Yeah, because that's your gravitar. That's my that's my gravitar. Yeah, so I'm the foundation. We might need to do that in the future, if we Ooh. care about such things. There's your there's your um, John Galloway. There's your T-shirt right there. I am the foundation. I am the foundation. I'm just saying, John, we can't hear you. Oh, there he is. John is too quiet. John, you're very quiet. Speak up, John. Hello. <laughs> no, he's too quiet. That's all right. I should go to the control room and turn you up. Try again. Oh well. Hi. Your your London based internet sucks. Yeah, I concur. I think that was I expected. I think That's that was okay. expected. Okay. All right, good. Lower your expectations of John right now. Yeah. Okay. So welcome everyone. Hello. This is Hello. the first time that we have been streaming as not me. Yes. Which sounds like a no big deal, but it's more complicated than you realize. What an achievement that was. It was a massive achievement. We are logged in as the .NET Foundation, which had to earn reputation on YouTube and then get the ability to stream live. And then we had to change the code and live on the .NET site. It's very complicated. And I had to move all the videos or copy all the, the videos into a new playlist, which I can show off the tool I wrote to do that later on. So does the .NET Foundation have a new playlist now? Yeah, so everything's running off the new playlist. And the old playlist is still there on your account, but you could delete it now if you. I mean, okay. So let me. Because we want the, no, no, it doesn't matter, right? Because all the analytics are on the videos. So this is a good reminder to the uh, to the people. So go up, everyone. We'll wait. All forty-eight of you. I wonder why it's such a small number. Yeah. It should be more than that now. Go to the .NET Foundation. Do we have a .NET Foundation short URL, John Galloway? Not yet. Yeah. Go and. Subscribe. Press that subscribe button right there. Uh, <laughs> and there's a there's a playlist which has all of it. And we'll start to promote this. We'll put it on the Down and Foundation website. And we'll maybe we, maybe actually we should make a subscribe button on the live today's website. I know that's easy for you to do now that you can. Uh, so I'm just looking at the live ASP.NET website. When you click play, it says playback on other websites has been disabled by the video owner, and it says watch this video on YouTube. I'm hoping that's not a barrier that's preventing the video people. owner. Oh, interesting. I think that's I think what's keeping people from showing up. Maybe I mean you just click it, and then it takes them to the YouTube. All right. Well, I'm going to go. Hopefully, it would work. I'm going to go and double check that it's enabled. And you think it's enabled? It needs to be enabled later. I think it says that we can't do embedding until we hit 10,000 views on the account, like total. Who says that? YouTube says that. You have to enable monetization, and then you have to enable that, and we can't do that until we get 10,000 views minimum. I have never. I'm scandalous. Well, they changed a bunch of these rules in the past six months, right? There's a lot of backlash by streamers. 
um, because it, it makes it much harder now to. Well, to it's causing us a problem right now because we usually tweet this and we get 230 people. We have 55. I know. So I'm looking at your tweet. I was going to follow it up or quote tweet it with the direct YouTube link. So I'm looking for anything that says the ability Everyone to. Everyone has tech fatigue. Copyright status. Monetization has been disabled. Yeah, we did. This is what we looked at last week. We couldn't. It says that you need to have ten thousand viewers. The ten thousand. Um, no, no, viewers. I believe you. I just want to see it. So oh, I okay. Know. Yeah, no. Where, where do I go to that? It's in the uh, brand. Uh, one of those. Branding channel. Probably? It's one of those. It's the one with all the no, no. It's one with all the channel status and features. That one, see. And then if you go learn, um, where's embedding? Embed live eligible. Oh, eligible well, that's for not live. Issue. But you have, have a live, have... Have a, an AdSense account. Yeah, but you can't because that requires monetization. Inactive. Right. Yeah, we we looked at this. It's all the stuff Damien said. We tried it all. And it said that it comes up and it says, yeah, you have to have had 10,000 views on your channel before you're able to. Oh, look at that. And that's not going to happen with 68 viewers. Well, see, I mean, the .NET Foundation <laughs> account is incredibly new. You can see total, it only has 1,300 views. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But now that we, uh, and because all the, the problem is all the old videos are still on your account. So even though we have a new playlist, those views are still going to go to you. But oh. now that this video we're recording right now will go into the this account. This is the most popular video we've ever done. Right. Well, yeah, you know, we typically get you know three to five thousand views of each video, and so hopefully after a couple of weeks of doing this, we'll easily get up to the ten thousand. So scandalous. Yep. Yeah, that's the idea. So we we just got to make the move and deal with the fact that you know, blah blah blah. But yeah, All I don't right. know why the current live watches are so low. Seventy one. It's a slow day. Um, is it? Do you think that it is the inability of developers to press one additional click? I, I would hope not. Like, I, I hope the fact that it says maybe a lot of people just open it and leave it there, and then they hit play. Maybe they're sitting. You know what they're doing? They're sitting there waiting for that. Oh, I hope not. Click play, and it's just spinning. Well, when I clicked play, it came oh, up hang instantly. On. Said you need to watch it on video. On okay, YouTube. hang on a second. I'm there now, and it's playing. Really? Mine's not. Look. Yeah, but you, uh, you are the owner. I wonder if it's because you are the owner. You're signed into YouTube. And, oh, that's the way to do it. When signs is? Hit play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I thought I found a workaround. Everyone, ah, sign everyone sign in as the .NET Foundation, and then you'll be able to play <laughs> it live on ASP.NET. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so we have anything useful to talk about other than we're trying to finally move this to a different account and so we have some teething problems. Um, so there's one big thing you noticed. Mm. This is a special, well, last week was a special <laughs> thing, right? It's three years. It's three years. So I did <laughs> notice that last week we ticked over three years of this show. And I can't actually remember. It may have been one of those Facebook remember this day things or something. And I went, oh my god, it's been three years. Um, or it may have been because I was looking to move all the playlist items to the new account. I scrolled back to the very first one because I had like 113 shows. And I'm like, oh, first one was like exactly three years ago. But we missed it last week when we talked about it. So it's been three years. We're approaching a quarter of a million views, which I thought was pretty amazing, actually. Um, and but I would like to. We, we've been talking. I'd really like us to try and double our viewership by the end of this year. Like at the moment, I said we average between three to five thousand views of every show. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to get us to six to ten thousand. You know, or even you know, if we, we could average eight thousand views. Yeah. Guess. So we said there's a few things we want to do. We we could start scheduling. You know, doing some actual work, scheduling some guests on every other show. Um, keep doing what we're doing and and pr promote it more. Like I, I mean, we don't really promote this anywhere other than just the Twitter account. Um, so I think we could probably we could we could have our street team do it. What's the street team? What's street that? team. When you have like an album and you don't have a label, you hire a street team and you give them swag. And they're going to go out to Vegas with like a, a little so thumbnail. The... We could give people stuff. Here, listen to my. We could give them. We could have thing. like we got like a, like a free movie tickets 
for yes. whoever signs it the most people or whatever. Like get, <laughs> really? so get someone on the on the street going. How do you attribute? You how do you seen, attribute the numbers? The dot, yeah, exactly. The dot, how do you attribute? How would we do this seriously? Like, how would you attribute how many viewers someone had brought in? Referral is links. Like, is there a referral YouTube? I don't know. Thing? I don't know. There's probably like someone who owns a company who's watching is like, my company does this. Just contact me. <laughs> awesome. I don't know. I don't I don't know. know. We'll see. I did. So I did. Um, John says he doesn't have any community links this week because he's remote. And you know, frankly, I think he's just being lazy. But that's fine. Like he's he's at least he joined for the three <laughs> years, so we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, I did. I did when I moved the when I moved the videos over. I went on a bit of a journey, which I would like to talk about. So. Obviously, the current live ASP.NET website already interacts with the YouTube API um, using the YouTube.NET package that Google provides because uh, it has to uh, like list all the items in the playlist and render the HTML on live.ASP.NET, right? The embed stuff doesn't need an API. It's just a static amount of um, iframe goop, and then you just put the current um, embed URL in. That's not a big deal. But to list all the videos from the playlist, you need to make remote API calls. So naively, I'm like, well, if all I need to do is copy all the playlist items from Scott's currently owned playlist um, to the new playlist, because you can add videos from any account to any playlist, right? As long as you own the playlist, then surely I could just use all the, the YouTube code I have already because it already has an API key, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then that's when everything got difficult. So because the playlist is actually owned by a brand account, the .NET Foundation account, of which I am an administrator or an owner or something, um, I can't just use an API key. So it, it, it might be possible for you, John, to go and create what's called a Google service account as that account, I'm not sure, and then that can get an access key that would be able to do it. But because I can't do that, I can only create API keys for myself, for the projects that I own, not for the ones that I've been delegated access to, you have to actually authenticate all your API access using the OAuth flow. Um, which is you know vastly more complicated because with uh, with the OAuth flow you don't just have a static um, shared secret essentially which is how API keys work that you put in your header you have to have your application prompt the user to redirect a browser to log in and then you get back an access token which is then validated by the app that gives then gives you a real token that you can then send to the APIs and so I didn't have any of that code in Live ASP.NET you can't log in to Google with Live ASP.NET we just have a you know a behind the scenes access key. So after three hours of banging my head against the wall, I forgave, I forgot about it on Friday night and then came to work refreshed yesterday and decided just to build a brand new app. So let me show you the brand new app that I built um, because it turned out to be an awful lot easier to just build a new app than it was to do anything else. So I'm going to just bring it up now. Some people may have seen me tweet this before. I'm just going to get the screen sharing working. Uh, come on, Hangouts. Screen number one, share. Please tell me when you can see the screen. Scott, do you want to lock it on me? Lovely. OK. So I'm assuming YouTube everyone playlist can see. playlist copier. Yes. I love that you did it as a website and not as a console app. Yeah. So why? You know, what, well, because then you can console do this. Console apps are the new websites. Because then you can just go to the website. And anyone can now use this. So I'm already signed in. So let me sign out. So you go to this one-page website. It's a single-page oh, application. Clever. How long did this take you to do? Uh, like Monday morning. No, but like hours. Because I'm looking at this and I'm seeing. I mean, to get the basic functionality, I'm three hours. Four, four to six hours of my time. You're saying yeah, you did it three? You were twice the Basic functionality right? was three hours. Making it clean, putting it on a GitHub, getting it on Azure was another, like double that, right? Hmm. So, so a day. Yeah, so a day. You're, so you're, into you're, Google. you're a god amongst programmers. Not at all. Uh, the hardest part was off, as always, getting this flow down that I'm oh, doing yeah, here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, I, so, so notice how, because I'm doing an OAuth flow and I signed in with my personal account, it's now asking me, well, which account, is brand account you actually, this is my son's YouTube channel. Your son has a YouTube channel. Yeah. We talked about that a few times, I think. I'm going to subscribe now. It only has one video because he got really excited, and now I, I, we have to... So we, <laughs> we've resolved to schedule time every week together so that it actually gets new videos on it. But anyway, that's a different discussion. Um, so now I can say, yes, I want to be the .NET Foundation. And so you can see now I am signed into Google as the .NET Foundation, and I could go ahead and copy. Uh, I put in a playlist ID here. So this was the old playlist ID. And this is the new one. I'm not going to hit copy because that will copy all 113 items from the old one to the new one. And I don't have any like check if the item is still like already there code or anything like that. In fact, does YouTube let you add the same video to a playlist twice? No. 
then it will just yeah. fail. If I hit yeah, copy, you need, it should, yeah, it should just unique. fail. Um, because like everything is in their schema, like everything is unique. So a playlist has playlist right. items. So playlist websites items for... have IDs, but those IDs are different to the videos that are in the playlist item. Um, and it took me a while to you know to figure out this whole schema and this this navigation stuff. Um, yeah, but if I just put some some bad stuff in here, you copy, um, you'll get an error from the Google API, which is shown uh, via model state in here. Um, so yeah, it literally uses. It, it, there's a lot of for loops in this code because there's I, I haven't looked at whether the Google the YouTube API has batching and things like that because you know if there's a, if there's 113 videos in the source playlist, it literally makes a hundred and it makes a call to get the, the first playlist with has all, all the items and then every copy. Is a separate web service call, um, so it can take, and each one can take like three hundred to five hundred milliseconds. So it actually took quite a while to run the, the copy once I got it working. Um, but the code is up on GitHub, of course, so you can go and see that it's under my repository, YouTube Playlist Copier, and I can show you the code. Let me see if I've got a. I'll do it in YouTube. In YouTube, I'll do it in um, in VS. So here I am over in Visual Studio. So yeah, it's really, really straightforward. So can you make the fonts bigger? Yeah, I certainly will. Zoom. I certainly will. Yeah. So basically, I used the our support for signing into Google. So you know, we have obviously third-party um, identification support or security support. And so this application in its configure services is really straightforward. Other than the standard add MVC, you add um, uh, you add authentication. Set cookie auth as the default. Uh, for authentication, and then you add Google as the uh, the actual person that you want to be able to sign in using. Um, there's a comment here to help people who are going to try and run this themselves. You obviously have to make sure that you've got the Google client ID and client secret configured in your mm -hmm. configuration, wherever that is. It's in my. Can you pulled that scope software. out on line 34. And this is the trick, right? Yep. So then down here, yep. you have mm -hmm. to pull out this. You have to tell Google when you're signing in what scope do you want the OAuth access token to have. That is an interesting flaunting of the law of Demeter. In what way? Oh, this one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, yeah, five times. Um, but this is the YouTube API. Um, yeah, not that we're immune from that, as you can see. No, I mean, hey, who are we to talk? No, we, like, we, 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 show we, we, me any reasonable code base no, that no. isn't for us, it's, the, it's, the, it's the flaunted guideline of Demeter for us. Right. That .NET really doesn't care. So basically, this, this allows you to tell our Google integration that we ship, that is the ASP.NET Core team, you can tell us um, beyond just being able to authenticate using this third party, if you want to get access to other stuff, you can plug a scope name in. So I'm using the YouTube API, which I've brought in separately, uh, to tell it that I want the YouTube scope. And then I've set save tokens to true, which means that when we then turn around after authenticating you and uh, writing a cookie out, we save the token that was valid for this scope into the cookie, right? So that it gets round tripped while the person is signed in. And then that means later on in your app, say in your index.cshml page, you can pull that token out, like I can do right here, um, to use that token to act on the person's behalf. Okay. So that that this was the new thing I'd never done before. I have you know in a workshop, John, we we taught signing in using Twitter and signing in using Google, but we'd never then taught how to in basically impersonate that user to call either Twitter or Google's APIs, right? Which is very common in OnoWorth, but um, we don't typically show that a lot in our demo. So this is how you do it. There's an extension method that hangs off the HTTP context called get token async, which is in, uh, owned by the security system. You pass in the name. Does this, this string here is owned by Google. This is what Google called it when they sent us back the OAuth reply, OK? So I just asked someone on our team, what is it that I need to put in here? And it's in the Google Docs somewhere. Um, they don't have an enum or a t constant for this one that I could find, which is unfortunate. Um, and then that you pass that in to the Google credential factory. Um, you say, get me a Google credential from this access token. And then it, it returns you this uh, Google credential type, which is also an HTTP client initializer. So Google's .NET API is very OO and very tiered with lots of inheritance and lots and lots of namespaces and packages that relate and things. It's 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 quite interesting. Um, all these service types that you use here rely on HTTP client, and they give you access to the underlying client as well as sort of represent the requests with their own object types. And so you can see here, I create the client. I set some properties on the client. I want to initialize my HTTP client with this credential. I don't really think that's particularly intuitive, but that's how it works. Um, credential objects from Google are actually HTTP client initializers as well. Um, you can just put in an application so name. So they put a little 
layer on the HTTP yeah. stuff rather That's than right. use our stuff? Well, they do use our stuff, but they they've just like the GitHub client. Um, you know, you could just call these HTTP clients directly by reading all the HTTP API docs that Google provide, or you could use their native language API, whether it's JavaScript or Java or Google or Python. They have APIs for all of them, and yeah. they all call down to whatever the native HTTP stack on that platform is. For .NET, it's HTTP client, and often you want to get access to the underlying response, even if the strongly typed wrapper doesn't. You know, expose something that you want to get access to. This is a common problem with the GitHub.net client. A lot of the times, there's a missing feature, and so people have to resort to just going like manually calling the HTTP endpoint using HTTP client. Google kind of mixes both together, which I think is actually kind of smart. So because you can just create, you know, use this strongly typed API to say, give me a YouTube service, um, you know, set some parameters, um, and then make a call. But then when you make the call, if I go down to the reentrant method down here. Um, you you literally create a request. So you say client dot playlist items dot list, which means I want to I want to call the list operation of the playlist items YouTube API. So these names here, these properties that hang off the client, they all map one to one to the names of the HTTP APIs on Google. So if you go to Google's API docs, there's a videos API and there's a, a playlist items API and there's a, a live broadcast API and like all the APIs that make up the YouTube API are represented here as properties. And then each one of those has basic CRUD operations, right? So I can say, I want a list. When I make the list, I want you to retrieve the snippet. This is known as the part. This is a YouTubeism, a Googleism. It's how their API works. You tell it how much data you want to return when you make the API call. I set some properties for the request. So now I have a request. I can say, well, the page token is going to be this. The playlist ID, this is the input parameters, right? These are the arguments. It's going to be blah, and please send back a max of 50 results. You execute that request. Now, this is literally an HTTP client request. And under the covers here, you can get to the raw request before you execute it if you want to. Okay, So they, you can always step one layer below these strongly typed APIs, and you can get to the request stream, the response stream, the headers, the body, all that type of stuff, as if you were working with a raw HTTP client, which I think is kind of cool. I haven't had to do that, luckily. The, the .NET wrappers are pretty good, but I, was, I thought it was an interesting approach. So once I've got the playlist items. It's interesting when to, read, to look at the various YouTube so let me repeat. There's, it's interesting to see the way that Google writes these things because it feels like someone that hasn't written .NET, mm -hmm. they were given the task. Someone told a Go developer or a Java developer, hey, we need a YouTube client written in C Sharp. Go do it. It is interesting. So what it, I will it, say, it's though, like is that... It's poetry written by a non-native yes. speaker. What, what's interesting, though, is that it's not like all their clients look the same. Like... Often when that happens, you find that all the clients they provide for every language kind of look the same. None of them is idiomatic to, their, to the language that they've been written for, but they all look the same. This isn't true here. Like the .NET, the C Sharp client here does look quite different to the Java client, which looks different to the JavaScript client, which looks different to the Python client. But I agree with you. This doesn't particularly feel like a typical you know, async remote access client that you would see in .NET. But I think maybe it's because of the way they chose to um, like layer it on top very thinly of the HTTP client abstraction underneath it, so you can always get access to what's underneath. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's part of it. I don't know. The things that are a little unnatural are like depending on what you pass in here, like what part you want to retrieve, mm -hmm. the, the types that you get back, these are Google's types here. The types that you get back from the results will just have a whole bunch of nulls on them because they always give you back the same POCO that represents the, the response type. But the, the properties won't be populated unless you pass the right part identifier, which are comma separated. And each one of those parts has an API cost. So Ugh. basically, the more data you ask oh, for, no, the, more call, the more they charge you effectively in so, the rate limiting. So let me see if I understand correctly. There is a big kind of the ultimate union of all things you could possibly want. Right. And then there's the, like, like with OWASP, there's the claims that you want to ask. You say, I want this, and I want this, and I want this. And then they'll give you that projection either completely empty because you asked for nothing yep. or completely full, but okay. it's going to cost you one, two, three, four, five that's calls. That's exactly right. Yep. And that's all documented in their APIs. That's what yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's, a, that's a way to do it. It is. It is a way to do it. Um, and so, yeah, basically, once I get all the playlist items back, then it gets it's an M plus one problem, unfortunately. And if, if someone knows how to do this without doing M plus one, please send me a PR. Um, so basically, you have to enumerate through all the items in the playlist. And remember, they're not videos; they're playlist items. There's a there's a, a referential sort of you know thing going on here. And then um, for each playlist item, I have to create a new playlist item snippet. And then I have to set the playlist ID to the destination of where I want to move it to, and the resource ID, which is basically the video ID, um, to the source one. So item.snippet.resource_id. Um, so this is basically create me a new playlist item 
inside the destination playlist using the resource ID of the one from the source playlist, right? And then I, I call insert on the destination uh, playlist for every single one of those items. So retrieving the original playlist, you know, I can do 50 at a time, and so and this has paging, as you can see, because it gets to the bottom, and if there's a page token, it calls itself, it's re-entrant. Um, but the actual adding to the new playlist here, I have to do it once per, I have to execute it once per um, no match. playlist item. Not that I, I don't know, there might be, I didn't look hard enough. I mean, this works now, so but as I said, if someone knows how to do batching with mm. the YouTube API and the .NET part of it, then please send me a PR, that would be great. But that's it, that's all this page does. You can see there's a, the login button is handled down here because it's a razor page. I can just have two post handlers, one for the standard post and one for the login post. This just returns a challenge request and then our authentication middleware takes care of all the, the Google OAuth flow. Otherwise, this is all the, this is all the code in the site. Like this is it, it's literally it. Um, which is kind of nice. And then at the end, if it succeeded, it tells you how many it copied and renders that in the page in the message. Mm. And if it failed somehow because Google API threw an exception, I it's, shove that in the model state. Isn't there some, excuse my ignorance, but isn't there some C sharp 7, 8, 9 way to make line 62 and 64 cleaner? In what isn't way? There, sorry, put a, isn't there something you can do? Like put a, I, I forgot, this is, uh, this is me being dumb in public. Mm -hmm. Uh, like ex dot question mark error or something like that. Isn't there yeah, a like way? Yeah, that that's only if you want to. Um, that's called the safe traversal operator. Well, I think it actually has a. It just seems dumb effect. that you have to go and do that double check. I've always felt like that's the thing that Ruby Where's does well. Check? Where's the double check? Not the double check, rather the check at all. Like you catch it, and then it's like, well, if the error is not null. Yeah, but that, that's more here? for when you're doing assignment. Regardless, if you're happy with the result of an expression being null, mm -hmm. the expression still runs. In this case, I don't want to call add model error if the error doesn't exist. Uh, then how did, okay, so why did you get into in a situation where the exception got thrown but error was no? Who the hell knows? I'm just trying to be defensive. <laughs> Is there a way to do it in the catch? Uh, it may be able to do it with a filter. The so catch. there's now, there, there's, a, there's a concept of an exception. Uh, isn't there a catch block filter or something you can do now? Exception yeah. filters, C sharp six. Yeah, so I can do if, anyone know how to do this? I've never used one, so I'm let's learn live. Is it like X, where, when, 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 outside, is it inside, outside, it's, it's outside, outside the right? thing, when and then you X say when dot ex error. dot error nice. equals, does not equal no. Does not, no. Try that, right. put it and into parentheses, put that, put that, 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 that yeah. block. Yeah. Okay, so then, then I can just get rid of that, basically. Get rid of that, see if it compiles. And then I, that way I don't have then to. Then you get rid it. of the other throw, <laughs> although that means the throw semantics now go away. And now you'll redirect a page if it if it accepts. No, 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 no. I mean, because it just won't catch it. It'll bubble, which is what I want. Like th that's correct. It like this, won't this is bubble. It will return. It'll it'll redirect to the. If it gets in here, you mean? Oh, you think it'll bubble? Well, it won't because this condition it? won't fire. The the exception still fired, right? So this catch block only occurs. Oh, now. that catch is specific to that. So yes. then it will. You're right. It'll it will. The throw is implied. So you're right. This go. is the that's C nice. sharp six way of doing that's what nice. I did. Yeah. That's C sharp six. Is anyone in the YouTube comments confirming or saying no? You're thinking about wrong? an idiot. Because that's good. I've never, I've, like I said, I've never actually used. Lovely. That so as no, I'm no. saying this, fifteen hundred people are like when, 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 <laughs> the filter, when, when. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Appreciate. Sorry, it. I'm not. I'm not looking at them because I chose not to leave. No, them. I know. They're just making my me screen. <laughs> while I was broadcast myself. It's fine. Yeah. No, that's great. So as I said, that's open source. So if you have you know suggestions on how to improve this. 100 line razor page file, um, that by all means do so. But yeah, you know, it, it's yet another little example. I kind of like oh these my micro God. samples. Having trouble dealing with the fact that your required is not is stacked underneath the display name. That my required is. <laughs> Hang on, which part of it? Scroll up. Hang on, I think they're talking about. I'm having trouble like dealing with that. You are or they are? I am personally struggling. Okay. Which one? Which part? Go to the top of your. Uh, Right there, oh, this one. 26. What are you doing? What's wrong with you? Wait, 26 oh, and 25. You should always sort by length. That way it stacks like a little like a little pyramid. No. You're putting the freaky it's required thing underneath display. Well, I want to keep savage. you savage. I want to keep you happy. Ah, thank you. So, more more grating on me is this. I feel much better. Right? That is far more What's, grating. Isn't there a right click sort them all? Uh, they removed the sort. Now it only removes. Oh, that sucks. 
Yeah. See, Which, I you like, know, a lot of people think you should do anyway. So I don't want to. Then you just did a sort there. But see that? See that? See Because I, I, I don't like, have the option turned on. And it, there's no option to... And all the ReSharper fan people are going to be telling us now, you should just be using ReSharper. Um, you want it the other way. You want it reversed, right? You want well, the there is no option the in Visual, there is no option in Visual Studio that will recognize that Microsoft mm. is different to my own APIs. They only recognize system. Really? That's lame. And then you'd, yeah, I, I like that. You want system at the top and Microsoft and then third-party right. APIs. Yep, and then my stuff. But I want to select lines 1 through 20, right-click, and then say make pretty, and I want it to make it like like ASCII or like an arrow. Like well, a smooth like, curve. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, you want, hang on, hang on. I want it to be like a track. You want, you want like this? No, no. Oh, I just want fun. the end kind of to be fun. shaped cool, like a, like a, like a, like a I curve. I have no idea what you're talking about. What do you mean? You want it shaped cool? I want it to be like, like Google at the top, and then oh, yeah, Google yeah. services. Like the. Well, I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to select a, select a block and then just say sort, sort these ones. Yeah, I'm talking about not alphabetical. I'm saying like literally just to make it pretty. What does pretty mean? Like from length? John, explain to him. That is that is horrible. Seriously, you want to sort your usings by length, not by alpha, right. Alpha, but not alpha like length medics. to make them all like a line. I wanted to like go out and then go back in again. <laughs> I hope you're getting ripped to pieces on the YouTube comments right now. People don't realize how important the aesthetic aspect of things. <laughs> so I'm just looking at these, going, "Are these alphabetical? They're not." Look, oh, move that one Ben Adams just had a very smart statement. Okay, okay. We're missing subscribers because they're getting it. They're they would have gotten it from YouTube subscription alerts. Oh! So they don't even know that we're live. because They don't even know we're live. Lied. How many viewers are there right now? Do we hit 100? Only 88. Oh, okay. That, so, that, okay. So this is actually a really good A-B test. We this didn't means realize that we so many people get the notification because they subscribe to your account. We need to tell everyone uh, multiple times. Uh, maybe you need to record a short video. Maybe. Just record a short video on your on your playlist saying, "Hey guys, go over here, subscribe here." Hey folks, we all need to work on our folks. I'm going to tweet it. That's a really good point. Well done. I will do that now. All right, so that's all this code. There's literally no other code in this app. So, and like I didn't show the HTML, but the HTML's you know, it's pretty boring. Like it's literally just what you would expect. It has. A couple of forms, the sign-in stuff. It has an input form for setting your input and your destination, and some the validation scripts down the bottom. Oh, and I wrote a tiny bit of jQuery here to disable the copy button when you click it, when when the submit form happens. Um, and the part here that took me the longest amount of time was learning how to turn off MVC client validation for a specific button. Go we'll tweet that, by the way, John. Actually, everybody tweet this. Because that, it turns out, I couldn't find any documentation on it. I found the answer, not in a Stack Overflow answer, but in a Stack Overflow comment on a question. So that can, took me quite some time. Can one of you, is, is anyone logged in as powerful people? We've By logging in as ourselves without making ourselves admin, mm -hmm. we have neutered ourselves. By trying to do what? Oh, in the YouTube comment? John, are you the .NET Foundation? I can't not be. this minute. I can uh, be. Like, why, why? What's the problem? Because neither you or I can post links. <laughs> what are you trying to post a link to? The tweet. In the YouTube chat? How is that helpful? Sorry, I'm a bit lost. Okay. I was like presenting still. So I no, don't... <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just realizing that if we're going to start doing this this way, yes. we need to go in to the chat. Yes. Bless ourselves. Okay. As being admin. Yes. And, and then, then, and then go and switch over to that person. And then that will enable. Oh, just so that we can post links in general. Just so we can post links in general. Also, notice that no spammy people have shown up yet. Yeah, that's because you know we not, have no this isn't famous link here. So Nick is saying he doesn't see a channel for the standups yet, and he'll subscribe when it's there. So John, this is the discussion you and I had about what's a channel versus what's an account versus what's a playlist. Our current plan wasn't to create a channel for this show. I believe the channel is .NET Foundation. No. It, it no. is a brand channel. Oh, um, yes, but it should have a playlist. It has a playlist, but I don't, I don't think you can subscribe to a playlist, right? No, no, no. They want to subscribe to all .NET Foundation stuff. So we need to tell Nick that that's what he should be doing, is Nick that just to subscribe it. to the .NET Foundation. Now, I'm going to imagine, though, Nick. some people may not be happy with that. They might just want to know 
But mind you, they, they probably were subscribed just to you before because we've never had a channel for this. It's always just been yeah, a Yeah, we don't have that way to do that. So Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, people... There, so he's saying there's an on.net channel. No, that's a channel we follow. Yeah, but it's a channel is the point. Do we have a channel? For on.net? Subscriptions. I don't understand what a channel is in the context of... You can have a channel within an account? Yeah, well, you can create it. So Fitz's Gaming Corner, the one that came up before, is a channel, but no one owns it. Like I, well, sorry, it is not an account. It is a channel. So you can do everything as if it was an account, but it has to be admined by someone else. So that's what the that's what this is. My understanding is .NET Foundation is a channel, which means that there is an owner of the channel, and we we are managers of the channel. So on but, .NET is another thing. Yeah, well, did, I'm assuming Bertrand set that up at some point. Okay, here it is. On.net is a subscription that we have. Well, Our person at yes. the .NET Foundation is subscribed to the On.net channel. Right, So, but someone else owns the channel. His, his yes, point was totally there is a channel called On.net. Yes. There is a channel so just for that show. When he's looking at that, that's not related to us in any way. No, but uh, sorry, I think the point is being missed. He just wants to be able to subscribe to ASP.NET Community Standard. Yes, he cannot. You cannot do that the way we have set it up. Maybe that is a flaw. Maybe we should. Um, Maybe we should fix that. I don't know. Mm. So Nick is saying .NET Foundation is a brand account. That was my understanding. Yes, it is. But you, you can't... Can no. you create sub-channels using a brand account? No. Okay, you sure? Yep. Okay, then we can't... Then I don't think we can do anything about it if we're going to continue doing it this way. Uh, what do you mean? We just... We, we, using... No, no. <laughs> there are people who will be unhappy that they are unable to subscribe directly to ASP mm-hmm. Community Center. I would argue there is so far one person. Yes. When sometimes where there is one, there is others. But that's fine. Let's just let's just say that Nick get over it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, if we get enough feedback <laughs> that this is just not good what enough they, for people. What then... do they say in Australia about this? Well, take, take a, a teaspoon. Take a teaspoon and start and harden up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. So Nick is right. They'll get alerted about all videos, but that was that's always been true. We've never had a channel for this. This was on Scott's account before. So if you subscribed, you got an alert whenever, anytime Scott broadcasted anything. Um, so it's not any different. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. And so people are saying it'll depend on how much other content is on the channel. I believe that. John, we were, we were planning to put more stuff on this channel. Is that right? Like, there's other shows well, on the got, channel. Like, already. yeah, code conversations and all that. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we really do need to rethink okay. and think about having a separate channel. Like, typically, you would have channels for this stuff for each show. I don't think channels mean what we think they mean in the context of YouTube. I think, from the consumer's point of view, that's exactly what they mean. A channel is an account. From a consumer's point of view, I believe a channel is something that you want to subscribe to. Right, but a channel is also a human, a person. Yeah, it can be, but people can create a sub channel. So I, I have created numerous channels from my one account. Right? Really? So people, yeah, that's how I created my son's. Gaming. Oh, okay. I see you saying. So right? the .NET Foundation would make another YouTube thing, and then we go to there. Well, I don't know if there is a. I don't know. My understand. What I saw right now is the .NET Foundation. All we have done is create a .NET Foundation channel. What I'm saying is I'm looking here, like yeah. I'm sitting around looking in settings. I don't see anywhere where it's like make a new channel. That's right, because that's not a thing for that type of, we created a branded channel. That's what the .NET Foundation is. It is a channel. You can't create channels using a channel. Where do I go then? Where's the channel button? Where's the make you a channel? You have to be signed in as not a channel. So <laughs> go back up to the account switcher oh, and sign in. Oh, so there's a person behind yeah. Yeah. .NET exactly. Foundation. Yeah, well... John created that channel. And so if you go to the permissions for the .NET Foundation, you'll see like channel creator, channel oh. owner, channel, channel manager. Okay. All right. Um, well, maybe, yeah. Okay. Then we should, then if that's the case, then John should make a ASP.NET Community Standup channel. And then channel. we could have Code Conversations channel. Yeah, right, maybe. Fine, let's do that. And then, and then see if there's a way to, to tie them all together as owned by the .NET Foundation. I don't know. I don't know what the correct way of doing this is. It just, it, maybe we have a little more work. To, Nick says he's this. tweeted how to do this. He means he's, <laughs> volu- he's volunteering. To do it himself. He tweeted how to do it, like an article or something? I'm sure he probably Googled for it. Okay. Okay. Google YouTube. It oh, there, there it is. I see. There's an answer on how to do it. Cool. All right. Don't get shame. Hey. So, was there anything else I was going to talk about? Oh, people have noticed I've got two watches on again, just for, you know. 
I got the. Well, one's a watch and one's a Fitbit. Yeah, one's basically a. It, it's a cross between a. Fit, it's kind of in between a Fitbit and an MS Band. This is the Huawei Band Pro Two. Huawei, because when I think of bands, I think of Huawei. Well, it turns out, yeah, they they had a band already, and my my watch was a Huawei. I, the last watch I was wearing. It looks a lot like a Fitbit Aria with more stuff. Yes, and it it, it has it, it approaches the MS Band in the amount of stuff it has on it, but the screen mm -hmm. is not like a color OLED screen. Yeah. It's a sort of a dot matrix sure. um, screen. It's got um, heart rate. That's good. But it's got GPS heart rate. It has seven days of like active battery use or twenty one days of standby. Even with the GPS, that's amazing. That's well, if you turn the GPS on all the time, it drains in like three and a half hours. But you only use that when you're running. Um, it does have all day battery life, uh, all day uh, heart rate monitoring, which I'm using. And it has very good sleep tracking because I've had it two nights now and I'm very happy with how that's been working. Um, and it's incredibly light. It's so much lighter than the band was. So, and it's only $70. It's only $70. So, on the MS 70 bucks. Band, it's 250 bucks, I think, for the MS Band. It's I good. will look forward to getting it at Goodwill when it goes out of business in a year. <laughs> I don't think there's any danger of Huawei going out of business anytime soon, given how big they are. But, but Huawei doing these little niche things, right? Someone's going to get promoted and you'll never hear about that thing again. Uh, I think you're being a little too flippant. I don't think I think you're just demonstrating you're actually not up to speed with how much stuff Huawei has done in the wearable space. Let but. me rephrase. This is version three. It feels to me like there is um, long tail is long, right? Would they say that watches like the Apple Watch is ninety seven percent of the watch market now? You know, it's probably like Apple Watch, Fitbit, and then this long tail. Oh sure, but I think that's true of a lot of devices. And some software. vice president at Microsoft said, "Yeah, to the band, even though I loved oh, yeah, it." Oh yeah, sure. Some vice president at Huawei could wake up, stub his toe on a band on the ground, and go, "Ah, this thing," and then shut the whole division down. Uh, I'm not quite sure it's the same thing. Huawei isn't Microsoft in the sense that, yeah, you know, Microsoft has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of projects. Huawei has a phone division and a wearable division. Oh really? That, they have a that's wearable kind of that's the visible plan. You know, like that, that's what you see. It's phones and. I thought and, and I, when device. I think of Huawei, I think of like their Wi-Fi dongles. They make Wi-Fi dongles? See, I didn't even know. Where that. have you been? Exactly. You're being a little flippant about it. I am being Huawei flippant. Does. If I go to Huawei.com slash Huawei US, Global, they make oh, okay. LTE and Wi-Fi sharing and dongles and so every time like, I go overseas, I get a Huawei. They also make Wii. notebooks now, but I I not ever seen one of their notebooks. Seriously? I have had their phones and I've had their watches. Whenever I'm in Africa, I end up using a Huawei little like MiFi. Oh, really? So oh. they don't have them in the US. They don't ship those to the US. They're different markets. Did you go to Australia to get that thing? No, Amazon. Yeah. Amazon. I've been waiting for it to come to Amazon and then it arrived last week and it shipped it to me in two days. They announced it in July. So, all right, so far, I'm very happy with it for those who are wondering. Um, I kind of wanted my second device to be less of a watch and more of a it has alerts. The big thing I wanted was it needs to vibrate when I get an alert. I don't need to figure out what the alerts are. The hmm. app on the phone is really good. Um, and as I said, it's so much more unobtrusive than a second watch or something like the MS Band. It's 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 good. It's got the best parts of the band. And Does it have an API for JSON and stuff? No. Nah. That's the thing. It doesn't have all that stuff as far as I can tell. It's not Android mm -hmm. Wear or anything, right? It's okay. its own platform. And you can't develop it. That's um, cool, though. But it's 70 bucks, you know, and it's... 70 it, bucks, pretty sweet. It's also waterproof if you swim. It has swim tracking, and it has, like, yeah. VMAX, all the fitness stuff that I'm not going to use. But it has all that stuff for the people who are into it, so... Yeah, I already have my watch judging me on a <laughs> basis at this point. I don't, yes. I don't need more. Very good, very good. So, shall we answer some questions? Seeing as we do have, like, 27 people watching. 100 people today. We hit, we hit three figures. 100, exactly, on the nose. Look at that. Anyone want to answer, uh, ask some questions of us before we uh, we nick off? I get back to. We fixing appreciate your podcasts. patience, everyone, with our our kind of janky. I know production values. Thought That's we what had makes it us charming. Out. Thought we had it sorted out, but sometimes so, you have to try things and get feedback before you can get it right. We've confirmed people like guests. They like code. They like uh, guests that show code. Mm. Uh, I want to also. Uh, point out while people are thinking about what questions that they want to ask mm -hmm. that this is very important next week .NET Conf Ooh. Date. Muy importante. it's going to be three days why do we say six oh it's an in six days it's a countdown and uh, there's also local events so there's going to be some local events I don't know how many let's find out Oh, look at that. That's actually a decent amount. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Ooh, look at this. I entered them all in. 
You entered these in yourself? Look at that. That's pretty cool. Nick is asking if we're going to skip the stand up next week due to the conference. We are going to skip the stand up next week. Okay. Um, we should get. Is anyone over here in uh, Kenya, Ethiopia, Nigeria want to do a .NET Conf local? We should do a watch party or a training event. Where's Australia? Anyone in Perth, Queensland? Anyone? Step up, people. <laughs> New Zealand, Auckland, Wellington being called out publicly right now. Micronesia, <laughs> let's step it up. You can see Russia from my house. Canada. <laughs> the, generic, awesome. the generic place here called Asia. So you're going to be in town all next week, is that right? Yeah, Most I'll be in town all next week. Okay, and so we can... I'd love to get some people in Kazakhstan. I know we have some friends in Iran. Let's go ahead and get more people. West Coast, step up. Cool. So... .NET Conf, please save the date. Check that. It's going to be multiple tracks. It'll be streamed live. Some of us will be in Stockholm, and some of us will be in uh, in Seattle. Sweet. I am not on. I am not in .NET Conf. And I've actually spent the day kind of coaching some different speakers and going over stuff. And um, there's some really cool stuff. Like .NET on hardware. So there's a whole community day track. Nice. Uh, it's pretty sweet. Very nice. All right, we have some questions. Um, Signaler, uh, I am told the alpha will ship tomorrow. They are testing it right now, uh, writing some guides and stuff as well. And my understanding is they're all going well. It'll ship tomorrow. So there's that. Um, there's a question from, where was it? Um, Vladislav, uh, will it be possible to opt out of application insights in debugging? Yeah, that was uh, that's a feature that's coming. I think I want to say it's coming in 15.4, but I might be overstepping. It might be 15.5 um, in VS. If you want to opt out of it now, you can do it manually. If you set a certain environment variable in your launch settings.json, um, then when you launch using that profile in Visual Studio for debugging, um, it'll turn off the App Insights light up. Um, I'd love to understand why people want to turn it off in VS, just so people are very clear. When the App Insights stuff runs, when you're debugging in Visual Studio, it is completely local. Like There is absolutely no tie to the Application Insights service. It's just a branding thing. Um, what happens is the Application Insights SDK gets loaded into your application, and then all the messages get written out through the debug stream. In fact, if you open the output window in VS and switch to the debug feed, you'll see all the Application Insights JSON payloads coming out through the debug stream. And then the in VS Application Insights search experience um, and the sort of, uh, what do you call it, the diagnostics visualizer when the debugger is up, feed from that, and then you can search for trace messages and do filters and all types of, you know, get graphs and stuff uh, of all the App Insights data from your ASP.NET call while you were debugging. It has nothing to do with sending anything to Azure or requiring you to be signed into Azure. Like, it literally does nothing like that. It's only when you go and go through the Application Insights enablement experience in VS, which asks you to sign into Azure and you know, provision resources and stuff. That's the only time that you that thing would happen. But that has nothing to do with the debugging experience that we've enabled. If you still don't want it, like I said, you can you can set the right environment variable to turn it off. Um, I think that I think it's listed. There's an issue on the ASP.NET Home repo right now talking about this and the details for how to turn it off currently are in there. But as I said, we're looking to add a first class feature in VS just so you can toggle it down and turn it off just like you can browser link today. And yeah, our boss is looking through the door right now at us as we work. That's great. Um, <laughs> what else? What other questions? Uh, do, do, do. Any? I already answered that one. Uh, Hisham Hisham asks: Is there will be a patch release to make localization work on Razor Pages? I didn't know it didn't. Is there a bug, Hisham? Are you talking about the view localizer doesn't work? I mean, obviously the string localizer should work just fine. Um, maybe the view localizer abstraction doesn't work because it kind of works with views, not pages, but I'd like to know more about what you're talking about. If there isn't an issue already, uh, please do log one. Um, last time you replied how to uninstall VS 2017 preview, but my question is, does it make sense to keep it? Um, personally, I keep them all installed side by side. You can in, you keep the preview channel is, is a channel. So when you go to visualstudio.com slash preview, it will always be ahead of whatever the official release of Visual Studio is. And you can keep them both installed side by side so you get things back. Are you speaking, Scott? To I'm talking thing? to myself. I'm saying that it's not a YouTube channel. It's a Visual Studio channel. It's just, it's just, 
Don't listen to me. I'm okay. muted for a reason. Okay. I can see your mouth moving. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, is there an AV fail or is it just... No, no. It's just a Hanselman fail. I'm... Uh, okay. It, to the to the point about Visual Studio uh, installer, if I show you this really quick, mm -hmm. where's the button? Screen two, screen three. The where's Visual Studio? Which of my screens is it on? Can you see that? Yes. Yes. So you can, you know, you can, these are all side by side and then you can have different channels and, I, and internal Microsoft employees can actually scroll. Yes. And we have like okay, internal yeah. builds that scroll yeah. all the way down and they all live side by side. So I'm happen to be, I think this is the preview channel right here, actually. Yeah, you're using the community preview. If I went and downloaded the, the community regular, it would appear side by side and it'd be 15.3.1 or something. Yeah, like. to be clear, I need the installed. You only have one version installed. Right I have now. one version installed and I'm saying that I don't even have the non-preview channel. I would go up and download that. Just, just to prove it, I can share mine and show what it actually, it. I, I can show you what it looks like when you end up having more than prove that. It. Um, if I, the installer is coming. May, oh, actually, let me try very quickly. And sometimes I do this, and then it tries to update the installer, and then it fails because I'm inside the firewall and tries to get internal things and gets a little wacky. All right, so that looks like it's wacky. Bill Wheeler is tweeting now that I've called yeah. out New Zealand for a local .NET conf event, and now he's assembling one in Auckland. Yeah, let's not share mine because mine's doing wacky stuff. Okay. Anyway, the point is, yeah. yes, have as many as you want. I haven't yes. had any issues with it. Right. The only, th the only, only like, hassle is keeping them up to date. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, what else? Do, do, do. Finland has... VS Code tooling missing for CS Proj IntelliSense. Is it coming? So I, the, what they're referring to, I believe, is that if you open, you want to edit the CS Proj directly in VS Code, um, where's the IntelliSense for that? Jeremy, do you mean IntelliSense for the schema of MS Build, or do you mean for the package name and version IntelliSense when you're adding package references? Or do you mean both? Um, ultimately, I don't know the answer to any of it. We'd have to ask. Uh, the VS Code team, <laughs> the VS Code C-sharp uh, C extension team. Um, for Visual Studio right now, you get schema IntelliSense out of the box, but to get package name and ID, Intel uh, sorry, inversion IntelliSense, you have to install an extension from the gallery. Um, that feature will be rolled in at some point in the future, so we get that great feature back. Uh, I'm not going to answer that one. Uh, yeah, so Hasham uh, verified that it was iView Localizer. Doesn't surprise me that iView, lo iView Localizer doesn't work correctly in pages because it's iView Localizer and it assumes things about view paths which are different to page paths. Um, I'd have to think about what the right thing for a page localizer would be to do. We didn't actually think about that. Please log an issue, Hasham, and if you've got any suggestions about what it would do, uh, then we can talk about that. Um, Vladislav says it would be nice to see the default web host builder with an option to opt out of default loggers other than query builder services and remove them. Um, so we specifically opted not to do that. So the Vladislav is talking about the new API that we added in 2.0, which is the web host static factory API, webhost.create default builder, um, which has all the opinions in it. Um, and we decided not to have it so that you could call that and then have a whole bunch of stuff on it that undoes the opinions. If you don't want the opinions, don't use that API. Use the existing API that lets you add what you want from nothing. Um, we didn't want to start this, let's ship an opinion in the box, which is like, here's all the stuff we think should work together, and then have like first class different ways of removing them just from the opinionated set. So you, you can obviously remove stuff by, as, as he suggests, by um, looking through the service collection and uh, removing them. We don't have a very good story for, um, modifying the service, well, sorry, enumerating and removing things from the service collection. You could obviously write your own extension methods that do that fairly straightforward. Um, but uh, no, we haven't done that on purpose. I'd be interested again, like what default loggers do they not like? I think the only default loggers we add are the debug and the console logger. And because you can, you can control them all through configuration by default, you can turn them off without removing them. Um, so I'd be interested to know why uh, people uh, feel they need to be able to remove them from that opinionated set rather than just turning them off. Um, I mean, it's a nuanced distinction, but I'd be interested to know why people think there should be API for that versus just use the raw web host and build the one that you want. 
Um, how does the add new item raise a page template with a backing model class in VS get uh, lit up? Uh, that is available, I think, only in ASP.NET Core 2 projects. Uh, for example, if you're in a class library, none of the Razor templates are there. That's something that we're actually trying to address in the future. Um, but if you're in any ASP.NET Core 2 uh, application, you should see the Razor page template in the item templates list, is my understanding. If you don't, please log an issue or use the send feedback link in Visual Studio, and we'll try and figure out why. Uh, Nick is complaining that he has to restart on every preview install of Visual Studio. Suppose he doesn't do that if everything is closed, but I've never succeeded. Um, a lot of the time, I think it's, it's not deterministic. It all depends on what comes in that particular preview. Some things, if it, some things don't require install, some things do. Like if a .NET Framework version changes or if a shared component changes, then that might be marked in the installer feed as requiring a restart. But yeah, I don't think there's anything consistent about that. It all depends on what gets updated in any given preview build about whether a restart is required or not, I think. Uh, does the VS Studio team have a regular update release cycle now? Waiting on a bug reported, so I thought I'd ask. Um, I mean, it's certainly regular. I mean, we obviously have a, a lot of updates to VS now. Uh, 15, what are we on now? 15.3.2 or something is the current released version? What have I got? 15.3 uh, was what we released when .NET Core 2 came out. And we're now up to 15.3.3 on the official channel. And I think the preview channel is on 15.4 Preview 2. So there's definitely... Um, regular releases of Visual Studio 2017. Um, and obviously, the bug bar, like the, the bar to, to clear for a bug to get fixed in one of those patch releases is quite high, because you know, they don't want to risk breaking stuff. Um, otherwise, the fix might have to wait for the next minor release, which is you know a few months in between each one. Um, what else? Do, do, do. Getting to the bottom. Nick asks, is there a simple way for people to add iLoggers and such while using that simple web host API? Yes. So the simple web host API just returns a, an opinionated web host builder, not a web host. It returns the builder. It hasn't been the, the, the solidified in a web host yet. So when you get the builder back, you can add other loggers. Right? There's an API on the web host builder that lets you configure logging. Um, and then in, the, in 2.0, you can put logging providers in DI. That's kind of the default now. So you can, um, during the web host building phase, when you've got the web host builder back from the create default builder API, you can call configure configure logging. You get a log builder. You can add providers to that. They go into the dependency injection container, and then they'll be available throughout the application. The old logger factory um, API for adding providers still works as well. So if you still have code that relies or needs to work in one X applications, you can target one X, and it will still work in two X. But you don't get the ability to have your logger provider activated by DI because that was a feature of two O, not in one X. Um, but yeah, you can absolutely do that. Um, what else? V Vladislav is and get, just giving me some more detail about the questions I asked before about his questions. Uh, he says he likes them fine in debugging, but in production, they are unnecessary. Console logger without console window is useless. Well, that's not actually true. Um, for example, when you're running in containers, console logging is very often the um, logging that you have set up by default by the container orchestrator. Um, and so I'm not sure it's completely useless, although I, mean, I understand what you're saying. But again, if it's configured in your production app settings um, or configuration such that the filter is set to none, then the console logger will know up and do nothing and practically cost you nothing. Um, again, this is part of using the opinions. If you don't want to use the opinionated web host, don't use it. You know, Craft the one that you want. Build your own factory API if you want that has your opinions and use that. Um, don't use ours. <laughs> so. Uh, what else? Thanks on the uh, VS team confirmed as a bug, so we'll watch for it. Okay. Lastly, Chuck asks, would like to use ASP.NET Identity with Angular 4? I've started an app using the Angular template, but doesn't have any hooks to do ASP.NET Identity. Any tips on doing this? We were just talking about this yesterday. Um, I'm going to talk to Steve about getting identity options added to the uh, ASP.NET Core SPAR templates, because I think, obviously, that's quite important. So. Um, yeah, we should uh, we should look at doing that. Before we get them added to the templates, it obviously would be great just to get some samples set up. So if they don't exist already, I'll, I'll reach out to Steve um, Steve Sanderson on the team, and we'll, who works on the SPAR services stuff for us, and we'll see if we can get some examples of the Angular and React and Redux and Aurelia and Vue and Knockout templates that we have uh, using the identity stuff for uh, authentication, because that's obviously pretty important. A couple more questions have come in. Uh, Hasham is asking, can we make debug logger built in without its own package? That was talked about before 2.0. We didn't do it. It's now shipped, so there's really not much drive to, to change it. 
it's just not a big enough issue that we're going to go off and make it. So probably not. Um, it's in a separate package. It'll probably stay there for for the for the foreseeable future. Vlad asks, is it possible to route per host URL? I think. I, if I understand the question, I think it's a, a very similar question that we've been asked forever about routing, which is, can you use routing to, does routing let you recognize the host in the pattern? The answer is no. Routing only recognizes the path and beyond. There's no feature in routing today still, I believe, that lets you capture the host um, and use that as part of the dispatching logic. Um, if someone on the team is watching and says I'm wrong, then please let me know. But I believe that is that is the truth. Um, do, do, do. Nick's just talking a little bit more about what I was saying before. Um, okay. I don't see another question. There's a couple of comments. The, the, uh, Suchiman123 is saying all documentation now refers to adding the ASP.NET Core to all meta package, but that is for .NET Core only. It makes using .NET Framework hard. Uh, so the documentation should always differentiate between when you're running on .NET Core and .NET Framework and ensure that it says the right thing. So I, please log issues on the docs repo, github.com slash ASP.NET slash docs, if you find places where uh, the docs are saying that. They're saying, hey, you add the old meta package, but don't call out that if you're on Framework, you can't add the old meta package. So please let us know. Yeah, so there you go. Cool. And one last thing worth pointing out. There were a number of people in the community who got together and sent money via PayPal and via cash, and it turned into be quite a nice little chunk of money uh, to celebrate David Fowler's baby being born. So we went and, uh, per his distinct specifications, <laughs> got a baby monitor that has not only Wi-Fi but also RF. This is the top of the line <laughs> baby view from Samsung. So big thank you to everyone from David and uh, his wife for donating for that very nice example of the community coming together that was organized by Mordecai. Uh, and a lot of different people got together. And uh, you know, five, 10 bucks at a time turns into a pretty cool thing for, uh, for him and two babies. So Absolutely. thank you all. Well, thank you very much. All right, dramatic zoom out. Dramatic zoom out. And next week, this will be flawless, and all the YouTube channels and things will be lovely, and everyone. Sure. Well, next week, we're not going to be here. So, two weeks. Clearly. Now. Yes. Clearly. Okay. Engaging. Lock on, please. Go. Engage. Dramatic zoom out. No hands. No hands. Dramatic, dramatic sign down. Wow.